Hello, hello, and welcome to Eric Does Video Games. I am Eric, and we once again are playing The Long Dark, where we join Janice Clumps in the wilderness of Canada. Now, you might be wondering, why is there no game audio? Why can you only hear my voice? And that is because zero audio for the game was recorded. Not my voiceover, not any game audio. And quite honestly, it's a little frustrating. I'm not going to lie. It really is. Um... But I didn't want to waste any of this because we do accomplish quite a bit in this video. I will be probably going over some of the highlights. It might be a little shorter than normal, but I didn't want you guys to miss anything. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to get this figured out. I am quite new to this and I am trying different things out. It doesn't always seem to work out, unfortunately. So uh, with that all being said, uh, let's just jump right into some of the accomplishments and things that we got to see in this uh this episode of the survival playthrough. So we decided that we were going to continue down the road from where we were staying at the coastal homes, even though we were quite a ways away from the garage where we had base set up, uh, decided that there was more to explore and we were pretty well set up. We had quite a bit of food and a good amount of uh, water that I felt that we would be safe to journey further away without any risk of uh, you know, running out of any supplies. I also felt that it was good to start marking spots on the map of places we had been, you know, just so that we had more of a reference rather than just trying to guess where we were. I felt that uh, when we were checking out the logging trailers that it was a little confusing as to which was which as they all look kind of the same. So we decided to start doing that. As you can see here, putting a nice little red X on there marking that we had searched that house. While venturing down the uh, road there, we did come across a car. It did have some scrap metal in it that we decided to pass on, but it also had a gun. We had finally found a gun, a nice rifle. Uh, unfortunately, we only had two rounds on us for it, but nonetheless, we had found a weapon. Uh, definitely, as you will see, comes in handy. A little further in, but it was the main mission, honestly, for the entire episode, was to try to find a weapon. So right off the bat, we accomplished that. So I saw no reason to uh, really stick around in the area a little further. We didn't go to the ravine as originally planned. We did continue down the road, and uh, which we found another exit out of the coastal highway, as you will see here in a moment. Well, going through some rocks that uh, kind of block the roadway, you can see that we end up on the crumbling highway, the old island connector. Uh, first thing, of course, we got to mark our map to see where we were. It does open up quite a bit for us. It shows a little more than I expected, but it's not all that detailed. There wasn't really much immediately in the area, uh, but we do continue down the road here, and uh, which we... I have to climb under some rocks, around some trees. At this point, we do hear a wolf. I do believe we were spotted. It was quite loud. Uh, there are some tracks that show that the wolf was in the area. And just to be safe, we do, of course, ignite our flare. Uh, we do end up seeing that the wolf does make its way to us and starts to follow us as we try to look around uh, some houses that we found. They're a little dilapidated, as you'll see. We do end up making our way around the houses. Uh, I was hoping that maybe there would be, you know, just like a single room of an entrance we can go into, even though they seem pretty demolished. Uh, we do end up finding a basement door while trying to navigate around to stay away from the wolf or keep the wolf at bay. Uh, we do find quite a bit of supplies down in the basement. After rummaging around and seeing what we all had, there's a couple pry bars, uh, some spray paint, quite a bit of lantern oil, stuff that we didn't really need immediately, but also good to keep note of what we had. Uh, decided that we should probably stay the night. We were getting quite tired. It was close to getting dark. Um, to kill some time, we ended up reading the uh, field dressing manual, finished that, and I don't think it leveled us up per se, but it definitely increased our level. After spending the night, we see that we have survived 11 days and 36 minutes, 37 minutes, uh, which is definitely something to be proud of. 
So after that, we decided to venture back out. We do run in to the wolf again, but not only just the one wolf, we run into two wolves as we uh, almost get surrounded by them by this car here. We do try to use the car to keep them at bay to get away from them. I did decide to try to run away from the wolves. We do lose one of them, but as we got closer to the coastal highway, uh, it was, I decided that we might as well stand our ground. You only live once, literally, we only live once. So we end up, we end up getting a shot off, injuring this wolf, which runs away. Uh, we don't kill it as far as I know. We do try to go hunt for it, in which when we do that, the second wolf tries to come after us. Uh, I never end up found, we never ended up finding the first wolf, but the second wolf, I didn't really want to waste the ammo. Uh, so instead, I just decided to throw the flare at it, which did scare it away. Uh, hoping that it wouldn't return. Unfortunately, not even a moment later, it does come right back around. Uh, knowing that it's not going to leave us alone, I decided that we will use our last bullet to try to kill this wolf. And thankfully, as you'll see, it goes quite well. One shot, kill the wolf. We become the victor. We go, we take our flare, and we celebrate by standing over our kill in victory. We are champions. We are survivors. We're not going to let any wolves tell us how to live our life. Once deciding we were safe as I could not find the injured wolf, I uh, harvested some meat from the wolf that we did kill, and then we cooked some of that up. We end up making a few trips back and forth to gather more meat. As much as that didn't work out for us in the past, it works out this time. Uh, decided to use the trunk of the car as almost like a refrigerator to keep some of the raw meat in. I just logically believe that it being outside would keep it more fresh than taking it in the basement to try to save it. We also come across a dead deer, which is what I believe the reason is behind both the wolves coming after us, as they are probably trying to tr protect their kill here. Uh, we don't really take any of the meat from it, as it was going to take quite a while, and I didn't want to be exposed to the cold. Again, it was quite windy, and even though we have been staying very warm, uh, it just wasn't that effective when we're out in the wide open. Uh, we end up just taking the hide from the deer as well as we took the hide from the wolf that we killed after taking all the meat and also some of the gut from it as that will come in handy as well. And yeah, so that was pretty much the end of the episode. We decided to, uh, you know, stay here in the basement, put our pelts down so that they can cure along with the gut. Uh, overall, again, a very successful episode. Unfortunately, you know, there's the error with the audio. I really wish that I would have known that sooner in the episode so I could have figured it out, but the way that I record, that doesn't always work out. Uh, again, hopefully in the next episode, everything will be fixed and we will uh, continue our journey to explore in this area here. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Until next time.